no. Computers are hard. Give me a second. Okay, nice. So, who am I? I think I am the CTO of Tatropos. Tatropos is a web application security penetration testing firm. I'm a security researcher too. Uh, my research interests are mainly API for IoT devices and web application security. And for the past uh, year or so, I'm also the guy who goes after C2 from malware. I think you have seen a lot of people cursing at me, a lot of Russian people cursing at me. So yeah, that's also me. Uh, you can find me on Evistikas on Twitter or X or whatever the heck it is right now. Uh, this is my web my web page. I don't post regularly, but you can feel free to uh, go there. My favorite interpretation of what uh, an API is is MuleSoft interpretation. It stands for Application Programming Interface, a software intermediary that allows two applications to talk to each other, blah, blah, blah. We all know what an API is. I'm not going to waste your time. Uh, it's a really easy way to interact with a DB layer. Write once, use everywhere. People are lazy. Keep that in mind. All of us are lazy. Developers are lazy. We are trying to exploit that laziness. They're meant to be seen by computers and not people. So you're going to see things that you don't really like. But yeah, that's part of being a pen tester or security guy. It's easy to build an API. It is really, really difficult to build a secure API that has no, no issues at all. The type of APIs that we are going to cover in our in my talk is REST, GraphQL, SOAP, and non-standard. First, REST APIs, it's 70% of the APIs currently on IoT and internet in general. They're really easy to identify. It uses entities, it's predictable, and as I said, it's the most common around 70% right now. Uh, GraphQL is the new Kid on the block. It's Facebook uh, query language. It's easy to identify. It's super easy to enumerate once you know what and how to look at it. It needs some reading on the specifics. It, it has a custom query language. It returns JSON too. And if it has introspection, then it's an easy win. SOAP. Is anyone using SOAP in here? No? <laughs> You're a lucky bastard. <laughs> so really old school. Microsoft implemented it. Microsoft still supported it up until uh, a couple of years ago. It uses XML for God knows what reason. Uh, it has an envelope format. I hate it with all my heart. <laughs> and then we have custom APIs. Uh, has anyone seen a custom API in here? A custom API, yeah, I know you, you have seen. So it can return anything. It can be open web sockets. It can be HTML. It can be JSON in XML, in JSON in whatever. It's usually used pro from proprietary devices and usually medical devices, which you, you can feel the pain like, when you see that, right? Uh, Quick intro again, documenting APIs. I think all of you have been a developer. You should document your APIs. They are freely available or forgotten. So if you are a pen tester and you find some API documentation that shouldn't be there, you have a treasure that gives you a better understanding of structure and how and where to look at to attack. Where API is used, everywhere. Only my dog doesn't have an API these days, which I'm not really sure. Industrial IoT, vehicles, mobile application, web application, IoT devices, uh, you name it, it has an API. If it goes to your phone, it has an API. If it goes to your computer, it has an API. It has an API, full stop. Well, uh, back, I don't know, five or six years ago when I started becoming a pen tester, everyone says, well, it's just an API. What, would you, what would, could you do? 
Well, I could gain full functionality of all of the IoT devices. I could make them do a lot of unintended things. I could punch through firewalls and pivot to internal networks. And when they see that, they try to they then understand what an API is. And that could, if I was really mean, which I'm not, reflash and potentially break devices. Again, SMS attacks, DDoS attacks, ransomware attacks, no need for Sudan. You just look at uh, the freaking platform and you have access to everything. Special place in my heart. This is from my former company that I was working, the sharing APIs. A lot of companies have decided that they want to outsource their APIs. So now you can hack a vehicle and you end up in a bathtub because bathtubs also have APIs for a reason I don't really understand, but again, they be them. A special category, industrial IoT, which is historically isolated. It has a really long lifespan. Some I I IoT are older than people that are in here. They're rarely updated, and I mean rarely. They're saf safety critical. They have a high uptime. Their protocol is unencrypted because back when where they were installed, they didn't, they didn't need the encryption or they didn't understand what encryption is. And making it smart usually ends up with some kind of monstrosity that is called IP to RS-232 or IP to whatever, which when you see it, you literally cry because, yeah. Miko, great guy, really good speaker. If it is smart, it's vulnerable, and that's true. So, what's the plan for the talk? I have a WASP API top 10. I'm going to do some kind of top 10 of the API top 10. I'm going to show you the exploitability of some stuff. That's me. I'm a really simpleton. I have decided that I'm going to take always the quickest route and the simplest route to do uh, anything and the severity and what it would impact if it was exploited. Vulnerabilities of APIs, high doors, yada, yada, yada. I think that you all know it. If you haven't looked at the WASP top 10, go there, read it. It's really interesting and you should understand what it says. So, this is recorded, right? Okay. See my crime alert. API research is really, really, really tricky. Never ever interact with a device you don't own. If you mistakenly do it, notify the vendor immediately and pray to whatever you feel is holy not to go after you. Platform admin means that you are breaking the CMA and never do it. Everything that is in red in my talk is breaking the CMA. Can I see your hands? Do you know what the classic IDOR is? IDOR stands for Insecure Direct Object Reference. Only one person knows what IDOR is. Okay, cool. Nice. It's a plus one. It's the easiest of all to find. Typical symptom of missing author authorization or, or authentication. UUID or GUID is not a solution because you can always find, not always, but most of the times you can find the GUID and it could lead into leaking a full data set. Example, Viper, I don't know if you know it, it's a car alarm. You can see in here that uh, I was able to update the user with uh, the user ID. If you see a post request that has a user ID that you could easily deduct for decision, this means, this usually means that this is an IDOR vulnerability. And I could change the password of the user. I could remote control the vehicle alarm function. I could identify the vehicle and geolocate it in real time. So if I fancy a BMW, because I'm that kind of a guy, I would go there, change the user's password, and uh, take it, unlock it, start, stop, pop trunk, and move on with my life. Project TV, really nice uh, EV charger. Have I knew anyone seen it? It's a really, really nice uh, charger. 
Do you see anything missing in this request? No one? Like, there's no authorization, no cookie, no anything. You just went there and sent that search ID and you could do whatever the hell you wanted. Full functionality on all devices, lock and lock, remote firmware update, PII leak, brick, platform admin, uh, you name it, it was there. So, yeah, you have to know that authorization not equals authentication or API Jesus is after you. So please authenticate and authorize all your requests. Injections. I hope you all know what injection is. If you don't, you're probably on the wrong <laughs> conference. <laughs> Error to make these ways of finding them. They're rare nowadays, not really rare, but not as rare as I would uh, want, and could lead to remote command execution. Your spy, that guy sitting there, Felipe found that really nice injection in there. Uh, Truth Spy was a spyware that was used for uh, spying spouseware, uh, really bad people. I'm not going to give you the SQL injection, but if you feel like going with a quote, you can probably find it. All of it is breaking the CMA. Remote control of all monitor devices, leaking everything, remote command execution on all servers possible to identify a crime syndicate. You should search on uh, TechCrunch, I think. And uh, with that name, you're gonna see the whole crime syndicate that was taken down from that SQL injection. What to do to avoid it? Use a modern framework, sanitize your inputs, keep the principle of least privilege, do not share databases or credentials for any reason. Can anyone guess what a lazy REST implementation is? No? Nice. Uh, a lazy REST implementation is when someone is just passing around the whole JSON object as a request. Need to check the response and request. Typical symptom of using a norm lazily. Always need to check for allowed parameters or user input. Could lead into platform admin. Long story short, if you are passing an object and uh, getting the object, check that it has what it should and nothing that uh, should not be there. Another really nice EV charger. So that one, I was passing my first name and it also was accepting roles because for a reason you could set the role. So I tried admin he didn't accept it, and then it said, no, admin is not a really na nice uh, role. You could so set account owner and tenant admin, which sounds really nice, tenant admin. Total compromise of everything, PII leakage, all admin functionality, platform admin, server admin, you name it, it was there. The bad thing in here is that all the API of, uh, of that charger was pristine. It was really nice. It was really good. They, they really aced the whole API, but they missed only that thing, which was enough to lead to server admin. Take a picture. Need to check a response and request. Come on. No. TikTok Tuck, a really nice Australian uh, uh, smartwatch for helicopter parents, whatever the hell that means. So API users, filter, family identifier equals with a number. You just change the number and you, were end, you end up with newest location of someone else's children. So like and you could also update the location of the child. So you could, you should not. <laughs> Again, don't steal other people's children, please. But if someone is a criminal, he could steal it and then update the location from there. So after that, what do you do? You should talk with Troy Hunt and his 
daughter and do that. This is a really, I don't know if. Yeah, you cannot hear it. It's me being creepy. He, he, say, uh, he, his daughter, Trehan's daughter, looks at uh, the watch that says dad, answers and said, hello, the, hello dad. And then you hear someone with a really big Greek accent, me saying hello from the other part of the Like, mm, yeah, not, not my greatest moment in the world. Total compromise of everything, PII leakage, all admin functionality, platform admin, again, everything in red is a crime. You should not do it. Avoid using functions that automatically bind the client's input. Whitelist only the properties that should be updated by the client. If applicable, explicitly define and enforce schemas for input data payloads. This is my favorite user group juggling. This is my jewel that keeps on giving. Uh, I have done 12 talks just with that thing, user group juggling. Other than that person here, does anyone else know what it is? No? Okay. Uh, user group juggling is when you're adding a user to your user group, you then start changing the user groups and see if you can add your user to another group or your group to another user or doing any kind of fuzzing. Multiple uh, ways of uh, user group juggling. Um, sometimes create is not vulnerable, but editing is. So create a user with your user group then change his user group to something else and he ends up in another company or, I don't know, in another world, could lead into platform admin accounts take over. Sonic Wall, they're a security company. And yeah, so you can see here it had the property group ID. And when you change that, you ended up with a lot of things. So you could access routers, firewalls, VPN, a lot more things. Web application, firewall, SaaS, whatever you can name it, just with a simple user group juggling. Mimosa. So they use it at uh, Mimosa is an antenna, 5G antenna company that is used uh, especially at certain military staff. So, nice target. Again, post one, two, three, four, users registration. This is the user group. Let's register a user to another group and you end up with all users in BII Lake, access to all internal networks, full organization access. They were selling military stuff. Never be lazy. Always check for correct authorization, especially on user access functions. The user access functions should be fully tested, fully uh, fuzz free, and you should always check that he, what you send and what you receive is what you should send and what you should receive. Second level IDOR. This is when the first level of IDOR is correctly defended, but they have a second level in uh, the request that usually is not. Well, at least they write. As I said, the fact that the check on the first level uh, is there does not mean that it is everywhere. Check every combination possible could lead into info leak, which is enough uh, to move you around or account takeover. Wallbox, again, charger, they had the same vulnerability three times. What I'm going to show you has happened three times. There is a special place in hell just for them. <laughs> so you can see in here that uh, the access config was uh, correctly checked, so I couldn't check the access config, but the chargers were vulnerable. So I just added all, my, all the chargers I just created a for loop, one to, I don't know, 50,000, 50, 100,000, I don't remember, and put it all on my access config. And then I had all the routers in my 
uh, account. Total control over all chargers. Lock, unlock, do anything that you want on the chargers. PII leakage of every user, but yeah. Breast verb juggling. This is my least favorite because usually it's not something that gives fruitful results. It uh, is when uh, someone is giving you, you're reading on burp or zap or whatever you're using, a post, change it to put, change it to delete, change it to something else and see the results. Read and understand all the REST principles. They're really, really interesting and should give you a lot of uh, knowledge, try to guess what function would not be implemented and it would lead into a lot of stuff. That talk was first presented in 2021, no, 2021, yeah. So right now that Pokemon is three years old and it's still not fixed. I'm not going to give you a zero day because apparently I'm not that person. But there is a charger company that is vulnerable to rest verb juggling. Don't go after them. No zero days for you, as I said. Never use the full control of URL mapping unless you know you will need everything. Always check for proper authorization. I'm just repeating myself now. Hidden endpoints. when you're testing a web application or a Android application or an iPhone application, read the JavaScript, read the source, see for endpoints that you don't see in your interaction, use automated tools that extract all endpoints, try to think where corners were potentially cut and it could lead into a lot of nasty places. Pandora, they said they were unhackable Spoiler alert, they were not. So they, in the JavaScript, there was an API slash Sputnik slash workers uh, endpoint that was never called. It was uh, from their admin panel and it was used to upgrade the user to a worker, so um, their employee, and also give them an email uh, of their choice, pandora.ru or whatever. You could use that with the ID of XXXX and send, uh, set a new email and then password reset and the account was yours. Again, geolocate any vehicle, unlock, stop a car, listen to someone from an internal microphone because Pandora had an internal microphone in the car. I don't know why. Profit. That's also red, but yeah, don't do that. SE tracker. I don't know if anyone is familiar with that. Again, helicopter parents. Probably the most popular uh, child uh, clock. There was a JavaScript file that was named backup.js, which, yeah, why would you have a backup.js referenced in a map? It went down a rabbit hole of me reading and reading and reading. We, I ended up with all the source code of the application, which means the JavaScript source code, the Python source code, the Android source code, static keys, SSH password, database configs, remote command execution on 40 servers, and 50 million devices, which you could geolocate any device. You can, you could, I think it's fixed. You should not again. You could send SMS or phone anyone and use it to win Eurovision for a reason I don't know, but yeah, if you're a fan of it, you could vote anywhere. And you could listen to anyone from a microphone. And those were kids. Hide endpoints. Charge point, probably the biggest uh, public uh, charge other than Tesla. They had a GraphQL open uh, introspection. Stop a card charger, charge for free. PII, pretty much everything was leaked 
you could download the whole database of the charge point. They had 300,000 users, I think, at that point. I did not download it because I'm free still, so don't do that. For the hidden endpoints, if you're a developer, keep in mind that people will look and will decompile your application. Always verify proper authentication, test for broken workflows, both automated, manual. Always when you develop, never, ever, ever trust that the user is going to do what it says it would do. And we're getting to the end. Critical to authorize all requests. Authentication is nothing if you don't check that uh, the request is correctly authorized. If the user is authenticated, it doesn't mean that it is authorized to do what it should. It's rare that something is, and uh, that nothing is authorized, really rare. Uh, only one of my examples was not authorized. Usually one or two requests are the ones that have the problem. And uh, if those are the account request, it will have a severe consequences. It can be a complete compromise of all accounts on a platform. Check that every request is authorized. Again, never, ever, ever trust user input. Any questions? No? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Hi. Um, when you talked about user group juggling, is this the same thing as mass assignment? I couldn't quite read the yes. text from the slides. Yes. Same thing. Okay. Perfect. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Uh, when you talked about second order riders, uh, in my opinion, I've always like encountered them as a combination of always two requests, but not the scenario in which you like mentioned that you were able to inject parameters in the body and that was able to like that's that's what you are baselining. That's the second order. Like in my experience, till I have been doing bug bounty for a very long time, I always find that it's always like the combination of two requests that you have to make a macro uh, request out of it. Then it's like it, it becomes exploitable in that end. Have you like uh, encountered the same scenario in which you have to manipulate two requests to get to the second level of hydro? More often than not, it's just a single request. Uh, there are, depending on how good the developer, not good, how secure as uh, it was uh, the developer in his mind, you could uh, end up with having to change a number of requests, not only two, five, ten. Uh, as I said, uh, you should check the workflow. It, you might have to replay five requests on, and on the six requests on the workflow, you will be able to have an icon. In your hidden endpoint slide, you mentioned that you use some tools to find the hidden endpoints. So can you recommend some tools that we can use or if any open source tool uh, for Burp, there is a URL extractor that gets all the endpoints. Uh, for Android, uh, there is a JADX uh, plugin that also does that. And there is a couple of Python requests, uh, Python scripts in uh, GitHub that do that for Android. I think there's also a project uh, for iOS, but I'm not doing iOS testing, so I don't really know. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, for uh, chargers, what was the initial uh, access to dashboard? Was it uh, wireless or Zigbee? I or... just cre created an account. Uh, I also had to bot most of the chargers so that I didn't break the CMA, but you could not. You, It's not... Uh, Request it. It's not uh, required to create an account. You just create an account, look at uh, the endpoints, and then you move on with the flow. Uh, very nice presentation, by the way. Uh, can I ask, what's the most one? So let's say, for example, if you if you talk about let's say IoT devices, or, or for one moment, yeah? which sort of category of IoT devices do you think are really really easily, basically breakable? I see. Okay. 
You want the long story? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can hear the long story and say that uh, most of the IoT devices that suffer from uh, a rush to market uh, uh, syndrome and they're rushing the market so they're cutting corners and they're not properly penetration testing and uh, properly uh, developed or outsourced can have security problems. The shorter story is if you see something which is uh, really cheap, it's probably vulnerable. And another from the from experience, when you start seeing really uh, small requests or really big requests in burp, those are potentially vulnerable. Any more questions? Okay. Yeah, one more. So you talked about lazy use of RRMs, for example. Seems like a lot of these issues exist because the tools people tend to use to make APIs by default tend to leave these things open, like a patch request allowing you to update properties you shouldn't be able to because that's just how the ORM works by default, but verb juggling maybe not because the frameworks tend to work by explicitly defining what verbs and endpoints exist. Have you noticed any ways of building APIs which tend to result in them being more secure or tools or approaches that don't tend to lead to so many of these issues by default? I'm gonna repeat myself. You want the long story? Or... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just joking. So um, it tends to, the, the obvious answer is if someone is really confident with his framework and he has enough experience in development, he rarely does uh, that kind of uh, issues, that kind of uh, uh, shortcomings. But uh, as we have seen, and as I have said, a lot of uh, IoTs have rushed to market syndrome, which means that they hire a junior developer that has to rush to market and has to do a new, uh, a new requirement, a new um, feature, and that feature is rarely tested, if not never. So things that are immature or things that are new or if you want to go after an IoT and you never find something, when they create a new feature, you should test it. Those are the prone to vulnerability. Any more questions? If not, let's thank. Thank you, guys. For great talk. <laughs>